Hello everybody, this is Decentralized Dave and today it's three of us. I will welcome Isabel among us. Hello Isabel. Hello Dave and Curtis. Thank you for having Hi, me Isabel. on today. And hello Hi. Curtis. Uh, Hi. So uh, today we haven't done uh, we haven't done podcast for a while now. We're kind of unable to meet at the moment due to traveling. Let's talk about you, Isabel. It's your first time here on our podcast. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your background? Around 2017, that's when I started investing in stocks and it coincided with the first crypto bubble. And surprise, surprise, of course, I got quite a bit burnt. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think for you, David, it was also like your time of introduction into crypto. My first purchase was 3rd of January 2018. Oh, so it was awesome. worse than yours. We were, we were very close. It was That's really it. deceptive. It was really deceptive. Oh, if you're inexperienced, of course, yeah. like you saw all this yeah. value go up and uh, the FOMO was enormous. You get carried away. And so, of course, I. I also didn't sell, I huddled through <laughs> and uh, it got rekindled sometime in late 2019. So I actually, um, I was kind of good at that, that I bought some Ethereum in early 2020 and that okay. was kind of great. And then of course the whole COVID crash and everything came. I had a little bit more time than usually and I started to dig really more deeply into oh, yeah. Um, yeah. the topic of investing. It's a story we hear over and over that many people yeah. got to crypto during yeah. those times because they exactly. didn't have anything else to do. I would say in hindsight, the most important lessons that I learned are that proper risk management is really important. Like um, usually um, history does the rhyme, but it doesn't repeat. So um, I guess many people were looking back at the previous cycles and thinking it might repeat in overvaluations and um, in multiples and in exact timing. And it really rhymed a lot. It, it rhymed quite a bit. I mean, we had a top also in fall, winter, mm -hmm. and um, the multiples from the low were pretty high, but not the multiples from the previous all time highs. So, um, yeah, it really showed me that risk management is important. Taking profits early on, like if you have a certain multiple mm -hmm. and not common sense, to... kind of, I call it following the common sense That's, uh, yeah, in my language, <laughs> not trying to ride all the wave up because it's totally unpredictable. And as we now know, impossible. I also forgot yeah. to mention for the interaction that Isabel is an investor from Germany. Um, yeah. And also, yeah. I recently, I, because I've been in touch with her for some time, and she's been recently pretty much on point. I remember in June, she was texting me about buying Ethereum at 900. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Isabel? Yes, we talked about that. Yeah. This uh, is the Ethereum chart. <laughs> this is the Ethereum chart. And yeah. as you can see from the chart, I had my area around 1300, 1200 mm -hmm. maybe. So once mm -hmm. it started closing below, I really didn't feel like buying. I really thought it was going to visit the, the, the lower area. So mm -hmm. 900 came as a surprise and mm -hmm. this was like as close to the bottom as it gets. So, mm -hmm. and you actually bought some Ethereum at 900. Yeah, actually I had some limit orders <laughs> at 930, like not much, uh, not much, just a small position, but but they got filled, of course, like it was not a big wow, time window, uh... but um, yeah, it was kind of lucky because I think the absolute low was 870 or something. 880 like on a this oh, yeah. contract, on USDT contract yeah. in Binance. Yeah. So yeah. you kind of uh, picked the bottom, sniped the bottom kind of. <laughs> something similar like when Curtis called the Bitcoin bottom, you remember Curtis? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. call it, uh, I believe, in mid June or something. You tweeted about seventeen thousand six hundred the bottom, and mm -hmm. that's like very yeah. Close. It's funny because that was a total. I was joking a little bit. I was just, yeah. I've never made a Bitcoin call before like that. I don't usually call <laughs> price, so that's. I love your honesty. I love your honesty <laughs> that you don't pretend like you know. Are you? No, I I never predict prices like that, <laughs> short term. So my opinions changed a lot in the last maybe six weeks 
oh. because we had the really great uh, well Q2 earnings were I think a, a B a B grade oh, okay. very good Q2 earnings which means companies are still making money people are still spending uh, and then we had jobs um, uh, 520,000 jobs this week mm-hmm. um, a lot of them were part-time jobs but still you have very positive job growth so so I'm very much just watching the real-time data rather than worrying too much about um, my long-term prediction. Mm-hmm. Um, I can talk That's a little smart. bit more at the end, end about that. But basically, Q2 earnings were good, jobs yep. are good. And so you might have a chance of what they call a soft landing, meaning mm-hmm. as rates rise, the economy actually holds up. Um, mm-hmm. So um, as it goes, things are still steady. So well, hold on a second. You just said that your stance in the past six weeks changed, meaning that you became more bullish or bo- yes. more bearish? More bullish. Uh, more bullish. Absolutely. Okay. Well, basically, so, I, I'm just looking at stocks. So if stocks hold, which it looks like they are, I think they're going to hold this year. The bottom is already in for stocks um, hmm. because Q2 earnings were good. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, Powell hmm. already said he's probably not going to, like, they're going to go up to three, maybe three and a half percent, but it could be that the economy can handle that. Um, jobs are strong. Uh, real estate still hasn't crashed. So, um, yeah, have, surprise uh, to me. So, um, hmm. it's only five months in tw- left in 2022. And I think that's probably the low uh, in stocks, which means there's probably a, a short term floor on, on Bitcoin. Point in crypto let's do the updates like uh, maybe that's gonna be a good way as well to express some of our opinions curtis would you like to start curtis sure. so starts. why don't you look at the 200 week moving average there we have um, it that, i think that's what's critical so um, oh yeah for trade technical traders this is the uh-huh. most important thing i think i so agree we went at the moment and we're holding it Um, At the moment, yes, but the weekly is just about to be done in a couple of hours, Curtis. So unless we we go thousand dollars down in the couple of hours in the next seven hours, then mm-hmm. we hold it actually. Right. So that's maybe the best simple chart to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, so this weekly calls is going to be important. Yeah, and then if you want to go to stocks, you can look at the S and P. Okay, stocks. Um, so. We co- so we... we've had a really healthy bounce there. Look at that. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, also, I will show you monthly. These are monthly candles. The last month was like unbelievably high close, like yeah, really fast yeah. kind of recovery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's Q2 earnings, right? Uh, most mm-hmm. companies reported very profits. They beat uh, earnings per share mm-hmm. estimates. Um, the tech companies did well. Um, oil prices have come down right there at 130. It's down to what, 95? Do we uh, choke which, oil? We can choke oil. Look at oil, yeah. So oil prices mm-hmm. came way I down. Sometimes check that, like, yes, and this is oh, very okay. beautiful. I had this red line here because it was my weekly, because this is a swing point on weekly. Okay, this is the from April, this is the swing point. And as right. the, from the technical perspective, once you start closing below the previous swing point, you reverse. So hmm. since we closed here in August, in July, we literally showed first sign of bearishness. Right. Con- so the market's saying, yes, yeah, so this is obviously a, an important piece, predictor of inflation, global inflation, right? Mm-hmm. Because oil is the best predictor of global economic activity. So it suggests that inflation's probably trending down. Um, I don't know if it'll go below 9%, but once inflation tops, the Fed is going to say, well, we've hit our, our goal there. We, we stopped inflation and there's less chance that they would keep tightening past like three and a half, four percent. So so basically the stock market thinks it's a good thing that oil price is falling. Ironically, it indicates a slowing global economy. So you can see how how weird the thinking is, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so the, the economy is shrinking. So stocks go up. That's bizarre, right? But it's, because Negative. it's all about the Fed rates, right? Cost of capital. These were the fast updates by Curtis. Would you like to add anything to that, Isabel? Yeah, I wonder um, from a technical analysis perspective, uh-huh. Curtis, what is what is your view on, on the charts? If you just look at the charts, like not considering the macro and what's going on, you can also just look at the stocks. Okay, right. so let me switch so to S&P. I'm not, a, I'm not a great trader, a technical <laughs> trader. So... I think we're gonna have a good August, but I don't think it looks like that in the in the chart here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. true. Maybe it's more um, on the Bitcoin chart. I, okay, sure, my sure, feeling sure. is that the Bitcoin chart, if you just look at the charts, 
It's yeah. Let's, okay. Let's go to bear. There Where's go. the bear side? I would so, say. So I mean, a bear would say it looks like we're going to go back down, right? Because it keeps it. Uh, what what does David call it? Um, it's ascending wedge and it's forming even more than it be was before. This is yeah. going to go down. Ascending wedge will reverse. I'm telling you. That said, um, mm -hmm. we've we've come down a lot, right? I mean, we've basically gone down since the first six, seven months. Mm -hmm. And um, the market does tend to surprise in a contrarian way, right? I, I agree on that. I don't think we're going below 20 anytime soon. I, as long as stocks hold up, I think we've got a bottom at 20k. Yeah, I agree that we probably go up before we go lower again. Yes. Yeah, I also agree with this that mm -hmm. um, um, there is probably going to have to be narrative uh, only up mm -hmm. from here before mm -hmm. we break this this wedge down. And yeah. also, would I would I think that the last push up when I don't know how long this wedge is going to be for me, but the last push up. It's probably gonna be most convincing one. It's gonna like, and the narrative is gonna have to change only up from here. This is mm -hmm. still people view it, view this as the bear market rally and stuff like that. And it, this is this is gonna have to disappear before we break down. This is gonna have to change first. So step by step, I always say that let's look at that step by step. And the next step is let's let's turn this into it's only up from here. <laughs> That's the next step, and it hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. True, but yeah. you see sentiment shifting a little. Like I feel like a couple of weeks ago, sentiment. Most, most people were still very bearish. Like a couple of weeks ago, like oh, it's going to ten k to twelve k. I and really want to talk think... about sentiment in uh, like five minutes. So uh, going back to the S and P, um, mm -hmm. we hit extreme oversold conditions in Ju mm -hmm. end of June, July. Okay, um, and that, and then we had a significant bounce. So it was the fourth largest oversold conditions since oh, 2002. Really? So there's a very, there's a lot of data that says that was the bottom, in my opinion. That's fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, That's, uh, that means, um, short yeah. term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that puts the floor under Bitcoin and crypto, in my opinion. I guess it's important to always consider both scenarios, like be prepared for both. Okay, so that was for the updates. Let's now talk a bit about sentiment. Who speaks first, Isabel? Why don't you start? <laughs> Yeah, and you, you I love that. Agree. I actually kind of agree with you, David, that I don't have the feeling that we've seen full on capitulation yet. I don't even um, think we entered capitulation yet, to be honest. Yeah, you still see meme coins. I mean, not as much as before. And it, it doesn't feel like capitulation, like comparing it to previous ones. I mean, of course, it's not going to repeat and be exactly the same like before. Mm -hmm. But I think it should be a more extended period of time and even, yeah, yeah. But yes, I, I agree that the human emotion cycle in, in roughly this, this sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, Curtis, would you like to say something about the sentiment? Are we, again, are we talking about Bitcoin? Crypto? So let's focus on Bitcoin, you're right. Let's okay. talk on, on so, crypto, in crypto. So we, so we did have a, we've had a ton of pain, right? We've had the Celsius stuff and mm -hmm. the Three Arrows Capital, and we did Lots hit 17.5. So we had what a 75% sell off. So, and it went down very fast. Remember that sometimes the faster the market goes down, the sooner you hit a bottom, right? Whereas mm -hmm. if you have a more prolonged yes, dragging, it extends mm -hmm. it. So we did have a very sharp sell off, um, which is, is saying that we may have hit a bottom. We had a lot of pain. We had people, a lot of the retail people left the market. I think almost all the buyers now are wallets that are over 10,000 Bitcoin. So it's all the big whales are buying um, with the caveat that there is the one to 10 Bitcoin cohort, I think that's also buying Is it mm -hmm. the one to 10, I think. So um, you're you, you had a lot of pain, retail got wiped out, um, a lot of negativity, um, a lot of fear, you had negative sentiment or a lot of uh, YouTubers started even calling 10 to 15 K. I agree. So I would say I would say about 75% of the pain is in or 80%. I would okay. say if we especially if we have another 3 to 4 months at the 20k range, I think that's the bottom. I think that's enough time. I'm going to say we 17.5k was the bottom. We grind and get really boring. Maybe maybe go to 28k and then maybe back down to 20k and then by the end of the year people would be will be bored and that will be a form of capitulation. 
Um, I kind of feel most of the fear has already been washed out. Anyone who wanted to panic or, or was going to panic probably has. Mm-hmm. But um, now is too soon. So I would, for the bears, I would agree that to say right now, um, for sure we're going higher. I think it's too soon. But if mm-hmm. three months from now, if we're still at 20K, I'm starting mm-hmm. to believe that that was the bottom. Isabel? No, I agree. I think in the next um, few months this year, we will gain a lot more insights. And if we have several months of 20K around that sideways mm-hmm. chop, and let's watch the stock market like the NASDAQ. It's all correlated. I think it might still go down a little more. But mm-hmm. I would like to add something to the sentiment. Mm-hmm. Ever since we started doing this podcast, that was like January 2022. Was I ever bullish, Curtis? Like macro bullish? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and I ask because I think the time is coming for me when I will finally be macro oh, bullish. Congratulations. But it's not That's today. It's not today. <laughs> it's not today. But I have something exciting that happened. So mm. I'm not I can't name uh, uh, the influencers that I mean. Mm. Uh, but uh, I think Curtis knows anyway. And I think even Isabel knows which ones these are. I'm, mm. I'm mapping few influencers and I was waiting for them to capitulate to go bearish. And these mm-hmm. were one of the most stubborn ones. And that's why I knew that these guys need to turn before we actually really have a chance to turn bullish. And these mm-hmm. guys are, they have called the bottom like every time, like they have called bottom in, in here in, in December, like this was the mm-hmm. final bottom, this was the final bottom, this was the final bottom, this was the final bottom. And now finally they are bearish. Finally, I've seen they've turned, they started selling, they are bearish. They talk Mm -hmm. about Corona bottoms and stuff like that. Guys, Mm -hmm. I can really finally, I don't have to uh, even debate that Mm -hmm. we are no longer in denial phase. I was last last time. That's good. That's good. Uh, I like how you broke that down. (laughs) <laughs> last time rather than just saying denial you're you're seeing it in a context of a story of influencers uh, which is interesting so yeah below, this below is my denial. way how to yeah. how i evaluate these things and i am not talking about denial we are in panic and mm. that's it because that's just one more maybe stage down <laughs> mm. and that also correlates with the uh, with the disgusting ascending wedge which is forming and keeps forming uh, mm. It's it's only it's very rare when these don't break down. It's very rare to be to be completely honest with you. Like mm. uh, and it's it's like it's for months. Oh my god! Like this is gonna be mm. wow. Okay, and last thing because we have just few minutes left. Let's talk about the question: Have we bottomed for S and P five hundred? Curtis says yes for so this I, year. Yeah, for this so. year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the Q2 earnings were were huge in my opinion, and then jobs on top of it. So you've had both. There's no indication that the U.S. economy is failing in immediately right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, could that happen in three months? Yep. Um, but um, so, and then that puts a floor on on crypto and Bitcoin. Pretty simply put. Um, one other thing to think about, just as sort of an, an, a, a takeaway for your listeners, is to think about. Now it's very contrarian, but that actually higher interest rates um, are inflationary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you understand that higher inflation rates, what do they do? They set the cost of borrowing, the price of actually yeah. uh, okay. mm-hmm. borrowing money. And guess what that does? That gets priced into cost of goods and services because the cost of building businesses is higher. So there's a lot of uh-huh. be careful not I can... be careful to always follow mm-hmm. the the hive mind that um higher interest rates would uh kill inflation they may cause it uh, wow. systemically if you think about it because as you raise if you raise the, the global cost of borrowing that mm. raises the cost of everything doesn't it so it's totally mm. contrary to everything we've been talking about on this mm. channel <laughs> and if you look on um like there was 520,000 jobs printed yesterday in the US and stocks sold off mm. why would that happen why would strong jobs sell off because they're worried about the Fed um, being too tightening more, all right? So, but be careful about just looking at things from one side. So, um, so mm. could we have rising interest rates 
and mm-hmm. rising jobs and a strong economy and rising asset prices. Yes, we could, uh, wow. but it needs to happen carefully. So, so don't mm-hmm. get too dogmatic about that. Um, yeah, I think, I think uh, the bottom is in. So okay. We had the oversold historical extremes. We mm-hmm. bounced. Q2 earnings were strong. Jobs were strong. Um, the most important thing is the inflation print uh, next okay. week. So if, if it's over 9%, I think we're going to have some negativity. If we get under 9%, I think August is going to be a good month for mm-hmm. stocks. Okay. And we might see crypto hit 28K. Mm-hmm. So for Curtis, it's, yeah. it's, it's in, the bottom is in. For you, Isabel? In, no, no, still not. Okay. So you think this bottom year, bottom right? End. We're talking 2022, yeah. Yeah. S&P 500. In mm-hmm. your opinion, it is more likely that we're going to see a lower yeah. S&P 500. Yeah. And can, as Isabel, can you give me a couple of reasons why? Well, like what's going to trigger that? Um, from a TA perspective, if you look, um, yeah, if you look at the Nasdaq chart, it looks like it should go to pre-COVID highs, and then there's this uncertainty, you know, about a recession and um, how it's going to develop. Yeah, I was also following more this narrative of a rising infl- inf- um, rising interest rates. Um, might be worse for the uh, markets and that we will see some downside again. I don't think a lot, but I, I I personally would give it a higher probability that we will see some more downside, yeah. You have mainly technical point of view, Isabel, and you mentioned that you would see- Not if- mainly, not mainly, but it's it's a factor. It's a factor, it, it, it looks like it should go back, but it's, it's not the main point. Um, I think the main point was more or the main argument was, um, yeah, that there might be a recession. We might have increase in well, um, global recession is here. Like Q quarter yeah. is negative. That's officially exactly. recession. Negative so global recession team. is at the moment. Yeah, and uh, the inability of the Fed right now they're not printing and not planning to. Okay. But we won't have the ability to do that in the future. Otherwise, I mean, inflation will come down a little, but not to previous um, numbers. And so it will probably stay around 5%. And so they cannot really print a lot more. So that that is the main main reason. Why so the, 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 the fact that they won't print again, that also that's mm-hmm. why also you see it as coming down. And also mm-hmm. you mentioned that the pre-COVID heights, which would be for, because you mentioned NASDAQ. So we are at mm-hmm. looking at NASDAQ chart, mm-hmm. which by the way, NASDAQ at the moment looks way more bullish than S&P. But mm. the pre-COVID highs were 9,500. So is that where you would see? I think so, yes. Somewhere around so. this? Not in the next couple of months, but... Okay, um, so like further away, like 2023, 2024? Yes, but not like two or three years, yeah. Okay, so so most likely next year, mm-hmm. 2023. Yes, because there was just so much, you know, it was... Like if you inflate a balloon, like the last two years were crazy in terms of okay. money printing, and it's kind of coming out now. That's the way I see it. So as for my stance, we're talking about 2022. Mm-hmm. For Curtis, the bottom is in. For Isabel, it's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say that perhaps the the result is going to be somewhere in between you two, because mm-hmm. um, this is S and P 500. I have my my line, my blue line. I have I have had there. I have had it there for a long time, maybe from the beginning of the year, even when even before we started like dropping like this. So mm-hmm. it, it's there for a long time, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be hit. Actually, maybe it's mm-hmm. not gonna be hit. But mm-hmm. what what can actually happen? First of all, I think my red circle is gonna be hit. That's number mm-hmm. one. But that could be only the retest. Mm-hmm. But second of all, what I think can happen that we can kind of like a fake out, just like just to trap, just to uh, to to, uh, to 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 wipe the stop losses. Mm-hmm. We could actually make a new low just to wipe the stop losses and close back in. Mm-hmm. And that's where we, we we probably would not even hit my blue line. So it would be it would be low, just a off just a little bit off the lows that we've already made i think this is the most probable to be completely honest in 2022 
because I also agree with Curtis that this is not for now, for now, it's not going to be as bad, I most likely. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I will not delete my uh, two blue bearish lines. These two lines will stay here. And one mm -hmm. day, one day, they will be it. I don't know why yet. Curtis is going to ask me my opinion why. Or maybe I can tell you just... <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I'm getting to know Curtis, you know, for the sake <laughs> Working with him just virtually. You just mm -hmm. virtually work with somebody. But it's still something. It's not like eye to eye, but... Um, my only one, uh, my only one uh, argument would be this is the this is the uh, M2 money stock. Mm -hmm. As we can see, ever since December 2021, we're we're flat. Okay, ever since late December. And if I really had to guess and predict, I think the Fed is gonna be kind of forced, or I don't know why, is gonna continue printing. I don't know if it's going to be as ferocious as it was in 2021 in, in this slope. It might be in this slope. It, it, it might be in 2018 slope, so it might be not yeah. as ferocious, but yeah. they're going to continue printing. But when doing this, they're again going to kind of just delay the inevitable. And at some point, I don't know if it's going to be in two years or three years or six years. Mm. It's all going to have to stop and it's all going to have to kind of fail. Uh, I don't want to be doomed. I, I don't want to be mm. predicting Mad Max here, okay? <laughs> I don't want to be predicting the anarchy, the world anarchy, but... The failure will be hyperinflation, not mm. not tightening. There's nothing to stop them from keep printing forever until people just don't want to use the currency, but M2 mm. is going to go higher in, in a crash, I think. Right, but the point is, what you're saying is, no one will, will want any of the fiat currencies. That's that's the crash. I think the crash no is going to be hyperinflation, kind of a Nazi Germany with Marx. With uh, I mean, yeah. So M2 would right? go vertical. Yeah, when M2 when the bread vertical. the bread cost like million marks or something. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> so M2 would from here M2 would go up another two or three x. Oh, uh, at least. But yeah. Bottom line, I think that the money printing is going to because once they resume printing money, the stocks are going to go higher. The Bitcoin is going to go higher, like crypto at least, mm -hmm. uh, and Bitcoin maybe still first. We haven't gotten to the to the topic Bitcoin versus altcoin. We would love to hear your stance, Isabel, but the next time, not today. We can do some altcoins governance discussion for the next time, if you'd like that. Thanks, Isabel. Thank you. Yeah, it was a great time with you. <laughs>